Captain. Transmission request from Ambrose Manor. Captain! Imagine my surprise when I saw the Unreliable leaving Gorgon with so much urgency and purpose. Tell me you found Mother's Journal. I'm positively dying for good news. Someone? You mean someone still has access to the facility? Oh, after all this time. Who was it? Drat. Make sure you have eyes on the back of your head. I doubt we've seen the last of this human vexation. If I know Spacer's choice, getting past the lockdown will be more complicated than just hitting a big red button. You'll need authorization, and layers of it. No. I think you're going to have to rely on good old-fashioned detective work. It's a good thing you have keen senses, a reliable ship, and a very wealthy sponsor. No, but I'm overjoyed that you had the courage to ask for one. You should always expect more from your employer. I seem to recall that Mother worked closely with Gorgon's R&D personnel, but not close enough to invite them over for dinner and cocktails, if you get my meaning. By now, they'll have moved on with their lives. If only I could do the same. I knew Mother was involved with some important chemical trials, but I had no idea her pet project was Adrenatime. Adrenatime is a working man's stimulant, like a cathanoid. Very popular at launch, though the marketing quieted down over time. What? No! I mean, there's some very morbid wording in the fine print, but I had no idea Adrena Time could make marauders out of people. That's it. That must be it. Spacer's Choice is keeping their dirty little secret about Adrena Time off the record. We have to find Mother's Journal. If we don't, then Spacer's Choice gets away with murder. I only hope we aren't too late. Adrena Time was touted as the working man's best friend. A drug that boosted productivity with no adverse effects. The promise of Adrena time cannot be overstated. Exhaustion and fatigue were supposed to be obsolete. Workplace accidents would be things of the past. For whatever reason, the drug never lived up to that promise. I don't know. And thanks to Spacer's choice, we may never find out. I know that I'd like to see a colony where the promise of Adrena time was fulfilled, and I doubt I'm the only one. Thank you. I certainly ought to know what I'm doing. I spent years trying to break into pharmaceuticals, professionally speaking. Mother wouldn't hear of it. She didn't think I had the wit to succeed in her line of work. Safe travels. If your leads give you any trouble, be sure and give them some trouble back, yes? That's the spirit. Until next time, my good captain. A word, captain? Good luck, captain. something exciting happen around here for once nothing wrong with stability
Hey, you. Yeah, you. Want to be famous? It really does gleam like spit shine gold. Ugh. Decadence ain't gonna save you when beasts chew through the walls. I've always loved that sculpture. Citizens, today marks a monumentous occasion in the course of Halcyon history. This is where those who fancy themselves the best and brightest of our society live. Trespassing here is a true honor. Welcome to the Musgrave Family Collection. Still a work in progress. If you're here for the annual Canid review, I'm afraid it's already over. Only thing going on behind those doors is good, old-fashioned, lawful behavior. This greeting constitutes your confidentiality agreement. You hereby agree not to disclose the location or existence of these events. Thank you for cooperating. Then you should have told me that before I greeted you. Defaulting on a verbal agreement is a punishable offense. Now then, how can I help you? We find that our clients enjoy the appearance of participating in illegal activities. Secrecy contributes to a feeling of indecency. The Musgrave family collection was intended to be a gallery of fine art. And here we are, using this place to practice semi-legal canid shows. Scandalous, isn't it? That's privileged information. I really shouldn't tell you. That's a fair point. All right, I'll tell you. But just keep this between us. Guaranteed secrecy is expensive, you know. Oh, it's all right. I'll give you this little secret for free. The Musgraves own one of Earth's largest private collections of art and literature. They were going to have the entire collection shipped all the way to Halcyon. Unfortunately, that collection never arrived. We haven't heard anything from the delivery convoy, and there's some purely hypothetical concern that the collection might be, well... I was going to say indefinitely delayed by unforeseen and unknowable circumstances, but yes. Let's go with that. Anyway, that's as much as I can tell you. Will there be anything else? Mr. Mostly is indeed attending our event, although... I am disappointed to discover he did not officially enter his canid Laplace into our competition. You should find Mr. Mosley just inside the prep room. Head inside and take the door to your left. Just between the two of us, I hope this doesn't become a tradition. Not looking forward to the next annual Canid review? Not looking forward to the Canids. Odious things. I don't know why we let them prance around the city. Welcome. This unit has been programmed to 
provide a selection of marginally subversive repartee. Now loading banter protocol. Indecency ratio set to 15%. Ratings. Attractive patron. You are looking downright unlawful today. Why not compliment your disorderly behavior with a little drunkenness and purchase a beverage? Indecency ratio set to maximum. Now loading venter protocol. Byzantium's glory days are over. Bits cannot purchase happiness. All pleasure is fleeting. No amount of inebriation will dull the pain of ennui. Warning. This unit's banter protocol has exceeded its maximum allowance of subversive language. Memory wipe initiated. This unit's banter protocol has been erased. Would you like to purchase a drink? How long did you say Musgrave was gone? I didn't. Frankly, I don't know. A couple of years? More? Which I can only assume is a you.
Oh, just hear me out. It's a brilliant idea. Is this about Canis? We've been over this before. It's a terrible. Welcome. This unit has been programmed to provide a selection of marginally subversive repartee. Did you know that Orville Schuyler feeds his canids discount salt to nut? Scandalous. Welcome. This. Do you know the interesting thing about canid shows? Oh, but there is, if one possesses an eye for statistics. Mathematically speaking, the interesting thing about canid shows is this. They're an exercise in futility. Winning is predetermined. Over time, the inevitable trend is that the race goes to the swift. Time and chance are just statistical outliers. In other words, if you put enough canids through enough trials, the one with the most optimal attributes generally wins. Exercise in futility. Oh, goodness, no. Not at all. I'm an actuary, you see. Well, not entirely. The actuarial sciences are more of a passion than a profession. So I suppose that makes me mostly an actuary. That's a bit of a family joke. I'm Clarence Mostly. Yes, that's us. Mostly oak trees, too. My grandfather invented them, you know. Well, no, he didn't invent mostly oaks, but he did purchase the naming rights back during the terraforming days. It's essentially the same thing. Oh. Then you're not here about my monograph. It's true, I was involved with Project Gorgon, but that chapter of my life is long since closed. Listen, I don't know what you want with Gorgon or with me, but let me give you some free advice, hmm? Let the past go. Live in the moment. Enjoy the party. I was wondering if you were the sort of person to accept sensible advice or respond with threats of violence. Thank you for resolving that ambiguity for me. Lifting the lockdown won't be easy. You'll need to send overrides from the chem lab and human inquiry. 
I don't have that level of clearance, but I know two people who do. The trouble is, I don't know you. I don't trust you. I washed my hands of Gorgon, and you're asking me to dirty them all over again. I'm going to need a good reason. Right, of course. Thank you for reminding me. Point well taken. I want a favor from you. Do something for me, and I'll do something for you. That way we don't have to rely on mutual trust. A grand prize trophy to the Canid Review. I want it in my hands. Get me that trophy, and I'll give you the remaining researchers. Names, locations, as much information as I have. Yes, but the winner is still in deliberation. Committee won't deliver a result for another six to eight weeks. <laughs> Bureaucracy. The trophy's being held in a vault at the other end of this hall. Find a way inside, disable any security, lift, carry, deliver. Simple as that. Don't think of it as theft. Think of it as appropriation by commission. My canid, Laplace, is statistically superior to every other canid in this review. Better average sprinting time, superior gait coefficient, optimal anatomical symmetry. I didn't bother entering little Laplace in this pointless contest. He's already won on paper, you see. That trophy rightfully belongs to him. Oh, you're much too kind. Does this mean you'll do it? Head into the main hall and take the elevator down into the maintenance tunnels. You'll find a service passage that leads up into the trophy room. The maintenance tunnel is the only way up into the trophy room. Some technician barred the door shut on our end. Ask Tilda Coatsworth about it, over by the podium. What's on your mind? My eye! I was wondering where I'd misplaced that old thing. It's perfectly preserved, you know. Every eye possesses unique dimensions, not unlike a fingerprint. The circumference, the shape, the color of the iris. An eye makes excellent proof of identification, assuming you don't mind removing one. I'd rather not get into the details. If Spacer's Choice ever asks you to test out their new model of monocle, just say no. Well, that's rather responsible of you. I'll put a good word in your permanent record. What's on your mind? At the moment, nothing. I have a one-track mind. I can't stop thinking about that trophy. Why isn't it in my hands? When is it going to be in my hands? And so on and so forth. You get me that best-in-show trophy, and it'll clear my mind right up. This is a private party. No solicitors. No vagabonds. No freelancers. If you're here to offer your services as an entertainer, we're not interested. I take that back. I almost want to hire you as an entertainer now. You could have dealt with hecklers during the shows. Unfortunately, you're too late. The review ended a few days ago. We've submitted our results to the Judiciary Committee and await arbitration. In eight to ten short weeks, we'll have the name of a winner. Probably. That gives us eight to ten weeks to file a maintenance request. Our technician barred the vault door and then disappeared without a trace. Can you believe that? The Musgrave Vault contracted a security consultant from UDL. They sent a technician to install a few security upgrades. 
anti-dissident auto-mechanicals and the like. That technician barred the vault, but neglected to leave us with a way in from here. He wasn't seen leaving the security room, so I can't imagine where he's gone off to. The tunnels are guarded by auto-mechanical security. I don't look nearly boorish enough to resemble a UDL guard, so they'd probably shoot me on sight. In any case, I'd rather not step foot in the tunnels. The tunnels are for disposing of unwanted refuse, and no place for a respectable Byzantine. Your eagerness to serve your betters is commendable. Here's a keycard. It should help you get around inside the tunnels. Now, was there anything else? I'd like to get back to mastering over the ceremonies, or people might question why I have this role at all. It's not canid hunting I object to, it's the impropriety. Since when do you care? I don't suppose you've any formal training in canid husbandry. I really am at my wit's end. It's my little Anubis, you see. He's listless and miserable. I simply don't know what to do about his condition. What an awful thing to say! Anubis is the light of my life. I practically shower him with luxury. You must understand, Anubis is a very picky eater. He dines exclusively on Terra Tu Saltuna, none of that rubbish from Monarch. Unfortunately, we've had a bit of a shortage lately. He's so miserable without his salt tuna. Yes, I suppose you're right. I doubt all this excitement is doing any favors to his digestive system. I suppose I have been spoiling him with salt tuna. He could use a change of palette. Oh, I do have some limited edition Rizzo's CCN 76 chocolate bars. Really? I had no idea. I suppose I'll just treat him to some Spectrum Violet then. You've been a world of help. I'll leave a good word on your permanent record. Careful. They're cute, till they go for the throat. Well done, Captain. You and this Canid have established rapport. You have a rather exotic presence. A new spatial mask, perhaps? Or experimental pheromone? The Emerald Veil plant is back to full production. There's something to be thankful for. I'm going.
unexpected. Here they come. It's only as good as its owner. They're the ones who ought to be in here. Yeah, we got some nimble fingers, Captain. On my way. Great work. circumstance out there for this the hell's the point
I don't know what's worse here, the leashes or the folks holding them. I've got a lot on my mind right now. Our trophy's gone missing, but I can't file an investigation because what we're doing here is technically illegal. Oh, don't look so cross. Those canids were put down mercifully. Not every canid is suited to the intense competition of our review. Some few canids display flaws that cannot be redeemed. A limp. Wall eye. Poor coloration. Are you getting emotional over some canids? You know we have a bartender just downstairs. Help yourself. Anyway, listen. Nature is red in tooth and claw, and so are we. Competition is practically a law of the universe. I shouldn't have to explain this to you. Go and attend to your business, then. Arguing with you is a waste of time. I'm not in the mood for an argument. I thought I'd make that Never cared much for hors d'oeuvres. The word is just grotesque. All those superfluous letters ruin my appetite. Dead canids in the service tunnels. Domesticated canids? Why, that's utterly revolting. My dear friend, I would not dream of hurting a canid. Every canid, regardless of their physical attributes, is a companion to their master. To kill a companion is a profound and unforgivable breach of trust. I'm glad I chose not to participate in this loathsome canid review. I will, however, take their trophy. My trophy! Look at this thing! Have you ever seen a more garish monument to the boredom of the elite? If only Grandfather Mostly were alive today, I would have loved to wave this trophy right in front of his cataracts. I hope you won't take it personally when I say I had my doubts about you. Nothing ever gets done in Byzantium, you see. Competent work is, well, a statistical anomaly. Lifting the emergency lockdown requires overrides from the Chem Lab and Human Inquiry. Access to those facilities requires authorizations from two senior level researchers Marion Blakesley, Jasper Lowe. They went into hiding after the project collapsed, but I've managed to calculate their last known whereabouts within a reasonable margin of error. I see you're familiar with my technique. I'd love to show you my numbers, but there aren't nearly enough napkins in this room. After the project shut down, I had to keep my mind occupied. I worked on my actuarial tables, calculated the average lifespan of a spacer's choice worker, that sort of thing. I realized some of the researchers had to be alive. I ran some numbers, did a little research, and concluded that the two most likely survivors are Marion Blakesley and Jasper Lowe. Nonsense. I just needed a good old-fashioned statistical problem to busy my mind. Keeps the faculties lubricated. 
Let me stop you there. I don't accept anything for free. And if you're going to analyze me, I'd have to go through the trouble of hiring you on contract. Think what you will of my intentions. My calculations are sound. You'll find Marion Blakesley and Jasper Lowe at the enclosed locations. As far as I know, Jasper Lowe and Marion Blakesley are the only two surviving researchers with high-level clearance. If you want to lift the lockdown on the manufactory, you'll need to send an override from the Chem Lab and Human Inquiry. I'm afraid it's the only way. I know it feels like you're being led on. What is that colorful metaphor commoners use? A wild sprat chase? Remember, this is Spacer's choice we're talking about. Their security protocols are just as inefficient and frustrating as their manufacturing. I'll tell you what I can. Dr. Marion Blakesley supervised the Human Inquiry and Auditing Facility. Live subjects, measuring tape and syringes, that sort of thing. Someone sabotaged the facility. Blakesley tended her resignation and vanished. I'm reasonably certain she's hiding in a maintenance bay on Groundbreaker. Well, with Spacer's Choice Equipment, who even knows? Dr. Blakesley tendered her resignation lawfully, but under suspicious circumstances. If you want to know more, you'd best ask her yourself. I'm asking you to trust in the predictive power of data. Dr. Blakesley may have disappeared after that sabotage incident, but the trajectory of her life was implied in her permanent record. Dr. Lowe described himself as a dazzling genius in his review. I disagreed. Of the 19 criteria that constitute the rubric of genius, Dr. Lowe only met 15. After the project shut down, corporate traded him off to anti-Clio in exchange for five lab coats. He's been transferred to an orbital lab around Olympus. Oh dear. How do I explain this without using too many syllables? Lab coats means scientists. It's a colloquial... It's slang. Let's get back on topic. You'll find Dr. Lowe in an orbital lab around Olympus. Certainly. What's on your mind? Let's try to keep it down, shall we? At least pretend we're being discreet? There's not a lot about Project Gorgon I can tell you. I know that's not what you wanted to hear, but I closed that chapter in my life. I've moved on. Look, don't tell anyone I said this, but if there's anything I've learned by living in Byzantium, it's this. If you go looking for the truth, you are looking for trouble. <sighs> All right, ask your questions. And then if you don't mind, don't mention Project Gorgon anywhere near me again. Mini Ambrose. Oh, Olivia's brat. Ambitious, but like the rest of her family, irrelevant. She tried following her mother's example, failed, and if she ever tried again, I couldn't tell you. The name Ambrose doesn't mean anything to me anymore, or to anyone halfway respectable. The Ambroses are, how do I put this politely, obsolete? A family's name is only as strong as its enterprise. The Musgraves have Rizzo's, and the Skylers have Anticleo, and so we show those names the respect they deserve. The Ambrose name was associated with Project Gorgon. The project died, and so the Ambrose name died with it. That's just the way the game is played. Project Gorgon was designed to change the life of every worker on Halcyon. We weren't just building a product, we were trying to build a society. How many workers call Halcyon their home? What do they eat and when? How long do they sleep? How hard do they work? What are their most productive years? When do their organs begin to fail? 
That's the nature of my work. I study human life in order to determine its value. Jewelers appraise diamonds, and I appraise people. Of course you can. You can break the entire universe down into numbers and statistics. Human beings are as much a part of the universe as weather patterns and orbital mechanics. Forgive me, Mr. Mosley, if I seem awestruck. I've not heard so many profoundly incorrect statements uttered in a single breath since I myself spouted them. A vicar with a sense of humor. There's a statistical outlier. It's complicated. I'll be honest, I didn't join Project Gorgon because I wanted to satisfy my intellectual curiosity. I was courting the daughter of a Spacer's Choice family. We were a mathematically congruent match, you see. I had the proofs all written out and everything. I see you've been in the same situation. Yes, she wasn't impressed by my absolute value. After she made her feelings clear, I left the project. <laughs> Everything. Every project has a margin of failure. We expect setbacks, complications, delays. Project Gorgon experienced a cascade failure. One mistake precipitated another, and another, and another. The labs failed to develop a safe drug. Human inquiry failed to perform their tests responsibly. An unsafe drug tested on unhealthy subjects by irresponsible supervisors. That's Project Gorgon. Anarchy is not a crime. It is a symptom. The undisciplined workplace secretes anarchy the way our glands secrete enzymes. It's a principle of science. Sabotage came first. The chem lab human inquiry, even my own office. Sabotage broke the discipline of our workplace, leading to confusion, leading to escaped subjects, leading to anarchy. No one appreciates the value of good data. The holistic surveillance device I wear is an invaluable tool, gathering data on all my day-to-day -day activities. My former colleagues can go into hiding and live in ignorance for all I care. I prefer the self-examined life. I know. Project Gorgon was a failure of leadership. Leadership to which I belonged. I should have pushed for stricter supervision. We gave the other departments too much freedom and not enough oversight. Spare the rod, spoil the servant. A deft hand with a mag pick. Oh. 
I'll be sure to raise a glass of Rizzo's Spectrum Violet.